Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Ruth chapter 3 verse 9 as well as Ruth chapter 4 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Lord Jesus for all you've done. Thank you for giving us great scriptures and things to inspire us to keep us going from day to day. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, let's get started. Ruth chapter three, verse nine. He said, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your servant. Spread your wings over your servant, for you are a redeemer. All right, and so this is the part of the story of a book of Ruth where um, they have taken in the harvest and um, Boaz is, is about to go to sleep and Ruth is about to present herself to him, basically propose to him um, that night by coming to him and laying at his feet. And so that was a proposal of marriage for them. And so he, when she gets there, it's so dark there. She, he's And I don't know if she's veiled or not. But um, it says, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your servant. Spread your wings over your servant for you are a redeemer. And I love that because um, we know that Jesus is our redeemer, right? And I just love the fact that it says spread your wings over your servant. Um, just, it makes me think of Psalm 91 and the safety, basically he who dwells in the secret place of the most high, um, shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. It just reminds me of that. And the fact that God is our redeemer, it is, it's so, so similar to me. And well, this wings here is actually the wings of his garment. They, they would call it, um, the way that the garment fell, those were his wings on his garment. And so basically she's asking to be covered, right? She's asking to to be to be taken care of. She's asking him to be her redeemer. And so um, this is conflated with Ruth chapter four, verse 12. And it says, and may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah because of the offspring that the Lord will give you by this young woman. And so after all her shame and after all her having to come back um, with Naomi and she's a Moabite, so she she's a woman who already is looked down upon her husband died. So that is a negative. She's having to glean in the fields of others, but she's also, you know, people are looking at her positively too, because she stayed with Naomi. And so, um, this is the, the scripture, the portion of the book where the people are blessing her, right? The witnesses are blessing her and Boaz's union and, and, um, speaking words over them, um, prophesying um, just that God will bless their lineage, God will bless their children. And so it says, and may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. And the fact that they used this particular one as an example is so amazing because Tamar is in the lineage of Boaz. We know Tamar is the one who played the harlot because her father-in-law would not um, let her marry her brother-in-law when her husband died. And, and so um, remember she, she went and she acted as a prostitute and her father-in-law impregnated her. And she is actually in the lineage of Boaz, right? Um, through the house of Perez. Perez was her son. So it says, um, and may your house be like the house of Perez whom Tamar bore to Judah um, because of the offspring that the Lord will give you by this young woman. So Boaz is in that lineage. And then within that lineage is David and then also Jesus. So these women who had been um, forsaken, these women who had been um, uncovered, um, were now being covered. They were, they were, their shame was being taken away and, and they, they had, um, 
um, hope for a future. And so here it says, um, because of the offspring that the Lord will give you by this young woman and young is a, as an odd word here because we know that Ruth was about 40 and Boaz was about 80 during all of this. But either way, this has more to do with the fact that it is conflated together because God brought forth um, in a uh, hope for, for Ruth, right? Um, he, he brought hope through a covering, through a redeemer. And, and that's the same with us, right? We can be in dire circumstances, circumstances that look like they have no hope. And not only is God going to bless us and keep us, he's going to cover us, redeem us. And he's also going to give us hope for the future. That's what the, the, um, the lineage represents the, the, the children are the heritage, right? And so they are the hope for the future. They are, they are what we look forward to. And so not only was the fate of, um, Ruth completely turned around, she also blessed her, um, mother-in-law, with a, a grandchild and and she is in the lineage of Jesus right not only is God going to bless you he's going to bless your socks off right he's going to he's going to do it so much better than we could ask or think God has so much waiting for us um, both here on earth but also in heaven just more than we could ask or think right? More than, than just the standard blessing. He's going to do a new thing and he's going to bless us in a way that we are redeemed, where we are covered as well as we are blessed perpetually. And that's what that lineage stands for, that perpetual blessing, that blessing that continues on and on, right? We're going to, our blessings are going to continue on and on in heaven. We are going to, we're going to just have a, a continual covering, amen? And that's what rep um, Ruth represents here, um, as well as her, her redeemer and, and the wings covering her. Amen. We are covered. God is our redeemer. Jesus is our redeemer. And we are going to be not just blessed by coming under the covering, but perpetually blessed all out of the obedience of Ruth, right? She, she obeyed. She did what Naomi told her. She was faithful to Naomi. And because of that, God just totally redeemed her. He, he took care of her. Amen. Take your eyes off your situations. Help someone else. Be obedient. Walk out the will of the Father for your life. And God is going to bless you. Not just, not just for now. He's going to bless you perpetually and into the future. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Father God, for this beautiful word. Thank you for this conflation. Thank you for showing us what we have to look forward to in you. We may not know exactly what, but we know that you are in charge and that you don't cut things short, Lord. You you don't you don't go cheap, Lord God. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory and honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father. Forgive me for all my sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, if you pray that prayer and believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit is in you and he has sealed you until the day of redemption and no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.